there's a few things I like and a few things I dislike about this Nissan Pathfinder. The looks, generally, I think, are not too bad. It's a big car and it's in the same vein as, say, a Toyota Kluger, something along those lines. Perhaps this is just a smidgen cheaper. The outside, it's got cameras dotted around it to give you that 360 degree camera, which is good for reversing. The Nissan has a really great feature. It tells you if something's been left in the back seat and it beeps the horn. And who hasn't gotten out of their car distracted by an unexpected call and left something in the car? I know I have. Okay, the mother forgot the kid, but is the kid really that self-obsessed that she didn't notice the car had parked, turned off, and the big bad door slammed? It's also got a pretty decent engine. 3.5 litre V6. It also comes in a 2.5 litre four-cylinder hybrid. You don't hear a lot about hybrids from Nissan, on the road, this quite hefty seven-seater all-wheel drive car is not exactly what I'd call nimble. It does feel a little bit vague. And unusually for a car this size, it has a CVT, which is a constantly variable transmission. Funnily enough, on a car like this, that's actually a good thing. Off-road, this car would probably be quite good with that very odd choice of transmission. Pathfinder comes in four grades, ST, ST+, STL and TI. This is the TI. All grades come in either a two or all wheel drive, but there's only this one transmission choice. The thing I particularly like is you sit very, very high. The seats are incredibly comfortable. They're heated and cooled and the driver's has lumbar support. Of course, it's on a button. You don't have to do anything as crass as touch a lever. But there is a lever on the second row of seats behind me, which by the way, has a mountain of room in five seat mode. A mountain of room. You pull that and it flattens the seats and the whole rear cargo area is as flat as a tack. Now the sort of person that buys this is going to be someone with a reasonably large family probably or at least they want to carry a lot of cargo. And Nissan is more or less out of the passenger car market. But Nissan knows what most people know and that is that most of the world has this SUV obsession. In this case the SUV is 180 millimeters off the ground which does give you a little bit of ground clearance but I suspect you aren't going to be doing any serious off-roading in a Pathfinder. I actually preferred the shape of the old model. I, I like that kind of square boxy shape that was slightly reminiscent of a Land Rover but this modern shape has been out now since about 2014, so about five years. I did ask Nissan yesterday if there's a new model on the horizon and they wouldn't tell me whether there was a new one coming or not. Don't know what that says. And there's a suite of safety features as well. There's active cruise control, blind spot monitoring, but there's no active lane control. The blind spot monitoring is really interesting though. Instead of being in the mirrors like most cars are, this one just has a little light at the bottom of the front window. The other big thing that Pathfinder is missing is Apple CarPlay. There's no Apple CarPlay, which I think is uh, a little bit sad. The center console includes the four wheel drive dial. Now, bear in mind this is an all wheel drive system as opposed to a proper four wheel drive system. Uh, probably won't ever make any difference to anyone and you can lock it in two-wheel drive if you want. In front of that's the gear lever and then the controls for the heated and cooled electric seats. Above that are the air conditioning controls and there's another zone in the back. 
Also in the back while we're on that subject is the infotainment system and air conditioning controls. The infotainment system will take an HDMI or USB input and you can display that on those screens in the back. You might think, oh, how annoying is that? There's going to be lots of sound. Well, no, they've got headphones for the back seat passengers, well, for the second row passengers. The third row passengers make do with cup holders. That's their nod. That's their nod to modern modern life. The screen on this is pretty clear. The font is enormous and the font's also enormous here on the infotainment controls. Although this is a touch screen you've also got this incredibly large dial. One of the main things though that annoys me about a lot of Nissans and indeed about a lot of cars that are sold big in say the United States is that this has got a foot operated parking brake. One of my pet peeves. It's difficult to get to, difficult to operate, it's just not my cup of tea. The quality of the cabin inside, it, 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 it's not bad, the, a lot of the surfaces are nice and soft, but the top of the dash and the fascia of the dash is quite hard. Yeah, I would have thought they would have made it just a little bit softer to give it that more premium feel. There is an odd finish to this plastic and it is high shine plastic on the centre console and I have earlier in the week gotten some marked shine back in my eyes. The dashboard set up reasonably well and there's a multifunction display in the middle. It does display all your other driving features like um, rear cross traffic alert and so forth. So to round up, I generally like the looks though it does feel very conservative. The cabin I like the look of but some of the plastic is quite hard. Comfort is excellent. I feel like I could drive this car for a very long time. Steering is very light, it is variable and quite honestly that's the way I like it. It makes it very easy to park and because we're all city dwellers, that's going to be a, an important thing for us.